Hello there and welcome to Complete Games with me James, hope you guys are doing well and this is the Aberration Note Read Through. Today we continue the note read through for Helena Walker and when we left off yesterday she had made her way to the surface and to the obelisk. She had discovered with Mei Ying and Santiago that the obelisks were indeed getting ready to destroy the village and Santiago figured out a way to hack into the terminal and perhaps transport them to the main control room. Before we jump into this, I just want to say a huge thank you to everybody who's been supporting me throughout the month of December with the daily content. And should I need to miss a day or I can't get an episode up, I will be sure to inform you guys on Twitter. So if you want to follow me there, by all means to keep up to date with the upload schedule throughout December, I'll try and keep you guys up to date there. Thank you. So once again, I'll say sit back, relax, and enjoy the notes from Helena Walker on Aberration. I can't believe it. We actually made it. We're inside the station. There's a platform here that Santiago was able to lock onto. Perhaps it was used while the station was being built. The architecture here is similar to the control center I encountered before. A jagged cavern of metal lit by an unearthly blue glow. There's a constant hum around us, likely from the power being sent to all areas of the station. Hopefully Santiago is able to find a map on that console he's been messing with. Then all we have to do is find the control room and shut down the obelisks. Simple, right? Right. As we made our way deeper into the station, we passed through a massive chamber. It was so vast that I couldn't see the bottom from the bridge we were on. Yet it was packed full. From wall to wall it was filled with specimen tubes, each containing creatures, fetuses or eggs. I knew from the holograms that I'd seen on the island's control centre that each station created its own creatures, but I'd never seen where the process actually occurred. There were specimens from every creature that lived on the station, from dinosaurs to huge alien looking monsters. I would have loved to have got more data from the room's consoles, but you know, after reading that aloud, I think Mei Ying was right. That idea really does sound stupidly dangerous. Good call. Ever since I saw those strange holograms in the island's control center, I'd considered this possibility in the back of my mind, but I wasn't prepared to confront it. Not directly. The room is similar to the one with the creatures, if much smaller. Specimen tubes line the walls in neat rows and columns, but these all held the same species, Homo sapiens. They weren't clones exactly, at least not of each other. Each one was unique, and they were all adults. I suppose I came from somewhere like this too, designed in that control center, then created in this factory. Does that mean my memories, they're all transplants? Fake? No, impossible. They're too vivid, too detailed. Maybe somehow the station can reach back in time and just copy someone. That seems unlikely, but I think I'll cling to it makes me feel more real. At least that way, someone actually lived my life. Even if it wasn't me. The human specimen room was hard on everyone, but I think it was worse for Mei Yin. She's gone completely silent, trudging behind Santiago, acting like an armored zombie. I've tried my best to explain everything and offer my support, but I'm not sure it's helped. When I think about it, it's incredible that she's made it this far with her sanity intact. In her time, they were nearly seven centuries away from inventing gunpowder. The idea of a machine that creates human beings, and that it created you, would be unfathomable. I hope she's alright, for all our sakes. Seeing her rattled like this makes me feel a lot less safe. We finally found it. This has to be the obelisk's control room. Fortunately, the consoles here were similar to the ones in the control center that I had used before, so I was able to help Santiago get started. He's been working on it for a while now, muttering and cursing to himself the whole time. I can't blame him. This is some baffling shit we have. No way. He just said he cracked it. It certainly sounded like he did too. There was a loud hum and... Oh. Those are roars. Lots of roars. Time to run. I'll finish this later. Right as Santiago finished hijacking the obelisk, the station unleashed a horde of creatures in self-defense, so we blasted the controls and ran like hell. Fortunately, 
Mei Yin's battle instinct brought her back to reality just in time. She led a charge through a throng of fangs and claws, while Santiago and I did what we could as we raced to keep up. Even though Santiago had prepared the platform for a quick getaway, it was a close call. I had to pull him through the portal just before it closed, but in the end, we made it. We're covered in guts and still a bit twitchy, but we made it. Stroof, what a day. I need a pint and the world's longest nap, stat. You'd think I'd be more infused. We saved the village. I confirmed the true nature of those space stations and when the gateway project is complete, we could actually escape this madness. It's all good news, really. So why am I not thrilled? I tried sketching some wildlife we spotted on the way back to the village, but I stopped halfway through though. What's the point? In the desert, I told myself it was a form of self-expression, but is it really? If a machine created me to behave a certain way, am I expressing myself or the will of the machine? I really need that pint. Maybe several. We'd contacted the village to tell them that we'd succeeded. They were a lot more excited than we were. It was quite a raucous actually. Cheering, applause and all that. Enough that Santiago almost dropped the radio right out of his hands. Even Mei Ying cracked a smile at that. She's coming around, if slowly. She just needed a bit of space, I think. I'm starting to come to terms with everything myself, even if my memories are someone else's or aren't real to begin with. What I've done since I've arrived on these stations was my choice. What I do from now on is my choice. That's who Elena Walker is. I think I'm okay with that. We got another call from the village, but this one wasn't celebratory. In fact, best we can tell, it was a distress call. Santiago couldn't quite clear up the signal, but it had that sort of tone. We heard Diana's voice, panicked shouts, and someone mentioned Rockwell. Since then, we've picked up the pace. Hopefully, we can make it back in time to help, and the situation isn't as dangerous as it sounded. If something would have happened to Rockwell, I can't help but feel it would be my fault for neglecting him. Damn it all. We've got to hurry. I feared it would be too late, but I never expected the village to suffer such complete devastation. There were bodies and debris everywhere. I nearly wretched at the sight in the distance. I could just make out the culprit, a colossal violet figure disappearing into the caverns beneath. We raced to find Diana, but by the time we arrived, there was nothing we could do. She died of her wounds in Mei Yin's arms, somehow still smiling. However, before she had passed, she was able to tell us the identity of the monster that had done this. His name was Edmund Rockwell. I can't let Mei Ying go after Rockwell alone. It's my fault that he was here. It's my responsibility. So why am I huddled here, writing down my thoughts as though I'm too afraid to say them aloud? For weeks, we've been besieged by monsters that Rockwell either bent to his will or created himself. But today Mei Ying finally grew sick of hiding. She grabbed every weapon and able-bodied beast she could and left to hunt him down alone. I've never seen her like that. Even Nerva never made her eyes burn with such hatred. Damn it. She's going to get herself killed and it will be my fault. But how can I shoot him? He's my oldest friend. He helped me when I had no one else. But it's my fault, so I have to try. I have to. I caught up with Mei Ying and Rockwell among the flowing rivers of magma in the deepest pits of the caverns. They were already in the midst of battle. By then, Rockwell had grown to a hulking monstrosity, lashing out with flailing tentacles. I needed only one look at that hideous, misshapen face before I made up my mind. I fired until my trigger finger went numb, and together we were able to divide his attention. In his fury, Rockwell created a hole in the cavern floor, and with one final blow, Mei Ying forced him through it. She nearly fell in herself, but I managed to catch her arm just in time. Thank God I did. If she'd fallen, well, I'm just glad it's over. To Sir Edmund Rockwell, know that I choose to remember you not as the monster you were in your final moments, nor as the secretive, obsessed man you became after I found you in the desert. I should have seen the signs then. If I had, perhaps I would not have to mark this empty grave. This grave is for the man you were, and the man I will remember. He was the man I talked and laughed with over long tea into the night, and a man who offered me supplies and a steed without a second's thought. He was a scientist, 
a scholar and a gentleman. Wherever that man is, I hope he's at peace. Your friend always, Helena Walker. The effects of the monster's rampage still linger. Mei Yin hasn't said a word since we returned. She just stares at that spaceship necklace, turning it over in her hand again and again. It took an hour of coaxing just to get her to eat. At least the Gateway Project survived. Through one miracle or another, Santiago is organising the survivors into teams to complete it. He thinks they can finish it within two weeks. I suspect I won't be welcome to join them when it activates. Not that I blame them. I brought Rockwell here with me. The people he killed. The destruction he caused. It's on my head. How could I ever ask for forgiveness for that? The gateway is set to be complete tomorrow. So last night, I packed up my things and prepared to say my farewells. Santiago protested, but ultimately understood. Mei Yin, on the other hand, I've never seen a breakdown like that. It caught me completely off guard, as did the part where she wouldn't let go of my wrist. She kept saying she'd already lost too much, that she couldn't lose anything else. I couldn't just leave after that, even if I could break free of that iron grip, which I doubt I could. So that pretty much settled it. Tomorrow, the gateway will open. We will touch down on the planet below. We'll finally escape this mad experiment, and we'll do it together. And that concludes the note read-through for Helena Walker on the Aberration map. And don't forget, if you are watching these as they go out, that this time tomorrow, I hope to bring you the story of Mei Yin. We haven't, of course, caught up with her since she left the island map. So don't forget to check back with me this time tomorrow. Once again, thank you for all of the encouragement and support you guys have been giving me over the month of December. And if you're not already, then perhaps consider subscribing. But until next time, I'm James from Complete Games, and I'll see you.